In the previous video, we looked at how our microcontroller can interface with the external world and capture stimuli that are analog in nature. Which is a very for us it's going to be a variable voltage. So now we're going to look at how our particular microcontroller, which is our TM4C, what hardware it has, what what internal hardware it has, and how we program it in order to do our capture operation. So we'll we'll look at uh, our uh, ADC uh, ADC in. TM4C. First, uh, we'll get some some basics about it. We'll look at the details of how it, uh, what are some of the uh, some of the features of it. Then we'll look at the setup. This is the one-time initialization. And then we'll look at the capture. How to capture a single sample, a single sample that is if I want to read an analog value what do I do in order to uh, what programming steps do I perform in order to capture a single sample so so let's first understand the basics of ADC on TM4C you also you already saw how uh, how analog to digital conversion works um, but first uh, on our microcontroller which is the TM4C um, let's make some points about it. Um, there is an ADC, there are actually two ADC uh, uh, chips on it. There is an ADC0 and an ADC1. Uh, we will mainly be using ADC0, the two separate uh, ADCs, uh, uh, hardware components that can, can be used for performing ADC. Our ADC is a 12-bit ADC. And which means our values that the analog value that you receive. So let's say this is your microcontroller and you're getting analog input. Let's call that V in, if you will, the V in. First thing that we see is that the V in, the reference voltage, the internal reference voltage, uh, reference voltage that we use is a 3.3 volts, uh, which means that I, it, it is, it is able to um, able to measure voltages between zero and three point three volts, and it's going to take that and whatever our ADC hardware is, and we'll will I'm abstracting this now. So it takes this analog voltage, which fluctuate, which varies between let's say zero and three point three volts, and converts it into a digital value. The digital value it converts. This digital value is a twelve bit value which means it has a uh, it has a, a range of 0 to 2 to the power of um, 12 uh, minus 1 so there's a total of uh, a total of 40 96 values that are possible levels if you will different levels that are possible um, so so in other words uh, so we can also say that our resolution Um, which is given by the formula range divided by precision in, pre precision in terms of levels, not in number of bits, but in terms of levels. Uh, for us, that's going to be 3.3 minus 0 divided by our precision, which is 4096, which uh, if we do the math, um, Let's do the math. That is 3.3 divided by 4096. So that's around uh, uh, 0.8. So let's uh, look at that in in millivolts. So that's around 0.8 millivolts. So it's approximately 0 0.8 millivolts. So that's the smallest change that our our uh, ADC can capture. Um, so the, the, the other thing that uh, we want to understand about our ADC is um, it has 
um, it has internally uh, a bunch of, so we program our ADC just like we program any other device so it has some device registers um, but more importantly our ADC has uh, the ability so on our, our microcontroller uh, we have 12 channels so in other words there are 12 pins on our so there are 12 channels and these channels are uh, called analog channels they call a in 0 through a in 11 and these channels are tied 12 channels are tied to pins actual ports port pins so for us those pins will uh, pins are let me just uh, try and put that here uh, our pins are I'm gonna blow this up a little bit so uh, channel 1 is PE2 channel 2 is PE1 channel 3 is PE4 so the the number next to this is the channel number and the pin corresponding pin so in in lab in our lab lab 8 if you will um, in lab 8 um, actually in which is our ADC lab we will be using in the ADC lab we will be using PD2 which is this guy right here which is channel channel 5 A in 5 as it turns, turns out, we, we have been using uh, the channel 4, which is PD3 all along. This is what Texas Display was using. Uh, there are several examples in the book that use PE2. Um, it, it might be, uh, th this might be something you might want to use uh, if you want to keep all of your inputs on one in, on one port uh, eventually when you get to lab 10 you will put your buttons on PE0 and PE1 and you could put your analog input on PE2 so all your inputs are on one uh, one um, one port but that's up to you but I'm just highlighting the fact that that's there okay and a lot of examples in the book uh, I'm gonna make a note that a lot of examples in the book use these two um, as the are uh, examples in the book yeah. so let's uh, let's uh, let's now see what the setup involves so the one time initialization um, before I jump into the one time initialization I uh, because the 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 code I can I can walk through the code and it can be pretty boring but let me first highlight a few things about our ADC uh, so that so that the terminology I use will make sense uh, our our ADC has uh, has four sequencers a sequencer is simply a, a, a circuit a hardware piece of hardware that does the actual conversion from analog to digital. There are four sequencers and they're called sequencers, um, I'm gonna call them SEQ sequencer three, sequencer, uh, let me write them in the correct right order, zero, one, sequencer two, and sequencer three. Uh, this is the simplest and this is what we will be using in, in our, uh, our our system and the way we choose the sequencer will be based on a priority and we'll get to that in the in just a second so most of the time when I'm writing my code and I choose a sequencer and all of the settings I do are sequencer based the second thing that we have is a uh, ability to choose speed choose speed of conversion that is, when we think of our ADC conversion, and you re recall this from uh, from my, uh, just a second, you recall this from uh, this picture that we, we, John and I worked on in a previous video. So what this is doing is, you get an analog input, 
right this is your analog input and eventually this analog input is converted to a digital out so this is your digital out this is your v in that is your d out that's uh, what happens inside doesn't really matter but one of the things that we we can determine we can control is how much time what is the time that it takes for us to complete this conversion this delta t now if you if you del if you try to f try to uh, make this conversion really fast fast as in the fastest you can make it is 1 million conversions per second 1 million 1 megahertz so that is 1 million conversions per second that you're doing if you do it very fast uh, your delta t is small the delta fast means delta t is delta t is small but it has a consequence the consequence so the up is that you have you have speed the uh, the benefit is that you have speed but it comes at a consequence which is the sample you'll get which will be very imprecise and on the other end of the spectrum we can make it very slow the conversion itself very slow and for us slow is going to be 125 kilohertz and 125 kilohertz yes it is the downside is it, it takes a lot of time for conversion the upside is that the sample that you get is very precise so we choose depending upon the problem you're working on if you need really fast sampling you're going to sacrifice performance uh, precision but you can choose up to one megahertz so the the way we choose our speed is determined entirely by this table that we have here um, and and I'll, I'll walk you through this table as we go along but there is a register a device register called adc uh, zero because that's the uh, chip we're using uh, it's called the pcr register pc register um, this register chooses the speed this is just how many samples we're taking you put uh, this is a 3-bit register and the 3-bit register can take values which are 1 3 5 and 7 if you put a 1 you take 125 kilohertz uh, or all the way up to 1 megahertz or 1 million samples per second uh, I'm using Hertz as samples per second yeah so the other thing that we can do on our microcontroller and again I'm this is conceptual is we can we can choose the trigger and to choose the trigger let me see which oops uh, to choose the trigger we will use we will use uh, another register called the ADC Emux and what the trigger basically is is when do we want to capture a signal to uh, ca capture a sample um, in, in, in our lab in lab 8 we will be using uh, the software start because what we will do is we will we will sample on demand meaning that whenever the user wants whenever the software wants a sample it will initialize this initialize the conversion and wait for the conversion to complete and then grab the converted value and use it now the they can you can change the trigger um, in in when you get to lab 10 there are other ways to trigger you can use an external uh, external GPIO you can use an, a comparator a comparator is typically used when you want to um, say that I want to sample but I only want to grab the sample when a particular a threshold is crossed so you can use an ex a comparator for that uh, you can use a PWM where on a rising edge or a flawing edge you can grab a sample you can also use a timer and the the, the on the, uh, the extreme is where you continuously sample as fast as your um, as your sequencer can handle okay so these are some of the things that we will be looking we will be setting so now let's dive in and first I'm gonna just give you an over just a dump of if you will the the registers that we have 
So these are all the registers. We'll come back to this picture as we go along. I'm gonna just take a snapshot of this so that I can come back to this. Um, the register a, that I already talked about are the, uh, the Emacs register, the SS pre-register, which is how I choose which sequencer I'm going to be selecting, and the, uh, the register which has our, um, which one is our uh, Emacs and PC register, which these are the three registers we talked about. We'll look at the other registers as we, as we um, discuss our, our one-time initialization. So let's uh, let's look at our runtime initialization. So I'm gonna first show you the example. The example I'm gonna give you is uh, is uh, in the in the it will be in the ebook. And the example I'm looking at is um, is the initialization. And I'll highlight this. This is this is channel nine, which is PE four. There are two parts to our initialization. Again, I will be talking in the context of channel 9 on port E pin 4. That is channel 9, which is A in 11, 9 on PE4 in lab 8, which will be changing this to channel 5, which is A in 5 on port E D pin 2. So let's get started. There are a total of 14 steps. The steps can be thought of divided into two parts. The first part, first five steps, are port specific initialization. This is what might be familiar to you. And the rest of the steps are specific to the ADC module initialization. So the, let's look at the first five steps. Uh, the first, turning the clock on and the direction register should be straightforward. But what is important and different here is the step three, where we, where we turn on the alternate function. That is, we enable the alternate function on port E pin four, which is, the alternate function here is the analog function. The second thing is we will disable the digital functionality on port E pin four by taking, by disabling, we turn off all the digital circuitry. So between those two steps where we choose the alternate function and disable the digital circuitry, we are saying that we are not gonna be doing any digital IO on this pin. And again, the process is to turn off. So we're doing uh, writing a zero to the digital enable, which we previously used to write a one. And now we're gonna choose the analog mode, which is to engage all the analog circuitry on that part. So this is this is a subtle, small difference between what you normally do because now we are doing uh, port specific initialization has to make sure that we um, we make an analog pin we enable the analog pin enable analog pin uh, on whichever whichever channel you chose so so now we get to our adc specific stuff the adc has an internal clock just like port e has a clock the adc has a clock so first thing we're going to do is turn that clock on steps sticks Step six turns the clock on and we stabilize. So this is as, as before, we wait for some cycles. So these steps here are turn the clock on and wait for it to become stable. So we're just being extra cautious and waiting for four, four instructions here. You don't need, need to step, wait for that long, but it's just a safe thing. So this is turn the clock on, clock on, the ADC clock on and particularly the ADC uh, zero clock on. We turn the clock on. We start off by setting the speed. This is the, this is the speed of conversion, which is simply configuring for 125K, which is a PCR register. We put a value of one 
Um, remember that's one, three, five, or seven. We put a value of one because we want a 125K. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna choose the sequencer. The way we choose the sequencer is the SS, SSPRI register has a priority bit for priority for each register each of the sequencers so we're going to write to this register a 0011 which means that this is the priority of sequencer 0 sequencer 1 gets a priority which is 0010 which is 2 this is sequencer 1's priority sequencer 2 gets a priority of 0001 which is actually a priority of 1 and this guy gets a priority of 0000, which is sequencer 3. And sequencer 3 has a priority of 0 and priority here, a low value, low number is, is implies high priority. So this is the highest priority. That's how we, we chose the sequencer, which sequencer we are, we are going to be using. We chose the sequencer, and while we are while we are setting it, we're gonna keep this whole thing in an enable disable. So the activation register here, we will first disable the sequencer, and we disable sequencer three, which means that we write to this. Uh, so we start off by by writing to the activation register a value of zero in this is this is three two one zero by writing a zero to that we have disabled sequencer and when we are done with everything we will enable it by writing a one to bit three so that's what this last step is but between these we're going to do some other manipulation one of the manipulation we're using is a is the software trigger which talked about this there are four values you can you can uh, sorry a four bit value that you can specify and the bit value is happens to be in this location so i'm setting it to a value of zero notice again there is a tilde here that tells me that i'm setting a zero in these bits so again uh, it, in this register your software trigger register which is your emux register we are writing a value so this is again there is more bits here and more bits here but i'm only looking at the 16th bit 15 to 12 bits 15 14 13 12 get a value of 0, 0, 0, 0 which means that i'm using a software trigger I set the software trigger now here is here is a important point so far all i did was set up the port set up port e do the sequence and nowhere did i tell the system that the adc is supposed to be getting its sample from channel channel 9 which happens to be our pe4 and this is our most important connecting step this step here is what tells the ADC sequencer sequencer three which channel to get its sample from, and it does that simply that is ADC. Uh, there is a register called SS Max three, and in that register, I'm going to write a value. So it says and everything with zeros, and I'm going to write the channel number. So this is our channel number. That's the most important thing here. That's the channel number so the channel number is being in the adc is being adc sequence adc zero sequencer three has been notified that what it's going to be grabbing from is channel nine which happens to be connected to pe4 that is the that is the glue that ties the adc and port port e we're done with that um, we're going to set some other control uh, control uh, bits and the control bit that we are setting is here it's called the ss control register and we are setting uh, in this register we're setting a cup uh, a few bits of interest and uh, there are really three bits that we are we are mainly focusing on um, these are called uh, the 0110 which is a six uh, we're saying no temperature sense temperature sense is a zero uh, we're saying that we don't want uh, 
and this d0 uh, i'll tell we, we won't worry about that for now um, but what we what we are mainly telling the system is that we this one of these bits uh, which is our uh, end zero bit which is this guy right here this is our end zero bit and what the end zero bit is really telling us is that when a sample is convert con completed on sample completion I want you to inform me by set a flag and we'll see where that flag is going to be so that's what we're saying on sample completion set a flag and the other other one is simply saying that the other bit here is simply saying I want only one one sample because we can we'll see later on that we can actually get multiple samples but we're only going to get one sample at a time and when the one sample i want is 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 complete uh, is uh, is processed and converted to a digital value i want you to set a flag uh, we're not going to be using interrupt so we're going to turn off interrupt so that's our next step here this is disable ss3 interrupts and now we're ready to turn the the sequencer on and once we do this once we do this um, the the ADC is ready it doesn't mean that it's going to be grabbing samples because we chose a software trigger if we had chosen the continuous sampling it will be continuously sampling and giving us values but for now it is ready and ready for our for our instruction so so let's take a look at how we do ADC, how ADC captures data, captures samples. So we'll do just one sample and the code for it is pretty straightforward. Uh, we will be using a simple mechanism here and the mechanism we will be using is a busy weight mechanism. And you'll recall what busy weight is from a synchronization lecture that we had in the previous previous uh, 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 chapter. So here's the essence of our our um, oops, of our conversion. So the the way our conversion works so i so for example this routine is going to be called simply called adc zero in um, that's the name of the routine i i when i call this i will get back a number and this number will actually be a 12 bit result that i uh, the 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 uh, the adc returns to me by grabbing a particular value so we start the adc we to start the ADC, we write a bit. So again, this is our PSSI register and we're writing a one to bit three. And by say, by writing a one to bit three, we're, we're telling the sequencer three to start sampling, sample conversion rather. So it starts a sample conversion and because I asked it to set a flag, it's going to set a flag in this raw, uh, raw flag bit, which is RIS. So I'm going to check that bit. So there's an RIS in the RIS bit, this RIS bit, RIS register. Again, I'm going to check for sequencer because it's sequencer three. I'm going to check for this bit. If it is zero, it means that it is busy doing conversion that is it the conversion is not complete but so as long as it's busy i'm gonna just keep doing this this is my busy weight that we just talked about this is my busy weight and eventually when the conversion is complete and we have a digital out coming out of the dac chip that's when we if it is if it is one when this becomes a one when this goes to a one i hit this point so i come down then I should read the data. Um, the data itself is read from what is a buffer, a buffer. This is called a first in first out buffer. And we will read the value out of that register. So that register has, has uh, 
it will hold the 12 bit number so i'm just being very cautious and just ending it with fffff so i get 12 bits of data out of it now the only thing i need to do is i need to make sure that the sequencer is aware that i've already consumed this data and i want to make sure that this flag is cleared and the way i clear that flag is i have a register here called the isc register and the act of writing uh, one in this bit which is again bit three if you will the act of writing a one here will make this guy go back to a zero again so that's what it's it's a clear it's a flag clear it will clear that bit so i cannot directly write to the ris uh, register if you will it's a device register you don't you're not really writing to it anyway but you can't directly manipulate this bit the only way only thing you can do is read it but to clear it you would write a one to this register act of writing one here clears that to be zero and then we return the data i hope this makes sense i know it's a long video but um, but the the important points that you need to look for is as you as you walk through and write this code ask yourself the more the important question how do any of these lines change how do these lines change for your lab which is using a in 5 on pd2 once you ask the if you understand these uh, these lines then you are uh, you're able to simply uh, change the appropriate um, commands appropriate registers here register values and 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 values uh, so that you can get your get your code to work for lab 8